So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and join me for a game of Massive Darkness by Simon. We're going to be playing the tutorial and hopefully, as Lightbringers, we will manage to defeat the darkness and win the day. So I've already set the game up for a solo game of the tutorial. If you need to learn how to do this, then do watch the how to play video. I'm going to be using Siegfried here with a Pit Fighter Berserker class. And I'm on my own, so I'm the first player. And I'm going to start by using one action to get two movement points. And I'll use one movement point to move this space here. And the second one to open this door. So we reveal a door card and we get three chests in the closest space, three in the next one and three in this third one here. And we see the first space has no enemy, second space has a guard and the third space has no enemy. So we're on level one, so we get a level one guard which is Goblin Warrior Mob. So as it's single, we only have one minion and one boss. So there's our boss and our minion. Now the boss is a guardian, so it gets a piece of level one equipment as we're on level one. And they have a skirmish bow, which isn't going to do them much good because we can see it doesn't align for their skills. So that's the end of the spawning, so that's the end of my first action point. I'm now going to use my second one for another move action to go one, two, which is my two movement points. And then my third action is going to be attack this mob. So I won't get the benefit of my shadow mode skill because we're not in a shadow space. Uh, however, I do have my special skill which allows me to do damage when I suffer an attack from an enemy uh, when I take damage from an attack from an enemy again not going to help because I'm attacking at this point so if we look my armor doesn't give me any attack bonuses my mace gives me one yellow dice and means we discount one of their shield results I could use my signature ability except for I have no XP and it would do me no good because it requires me to be wounded. I do however have my inner rage ability. So this when I attack allows me to re-roll any number of the attack dice one additional time. So I have one yellow dice and then defense the goblin warriors get two blue dice. So I roll all the dice and unfortunately they have defended. So we do ignore one of these, which means they have one. I'm gonna use my reroll because there is possibility of me getting two on this. So I'm gonna reroll one dice and unfortunately I didn't. So I failed to do any damage to the goblin warriors. And that was my third action point. So it's the end of my actions and time to do my counter attack. So now the mob gets to attack me. And I am in range because I'm in their space. So they get two yellow dice. And my leather armor here gives me one blue dice. But we also need to remember my special ability. If they hurt me, they're going to take one wound. Oh, so they rolled two swords and a bam hit here. So if they'd been using a bow, they'd gain the ability from this bow which would be plus one sword, but they're not, and they don't have any abilities to trigger off that symbol, but they do have three swords, one of which I defend, but that does mean I take two damage. So I go from five down to three, but I'm still alive, which is good. And because I took damage, I deal them one damage, which looking at their card is their health. So the minion will die. The minion dies before the boss dies. So it's only when the boss dies that I'll get the equipment. However, for the minion dying, I get one XP. 
If I was doing story mode, it'd be one micro XP. Now, despite the fact that there were two of them, they would not get two attacks. If there were multiple cards on the table, multiple guard cards or roaming monster cards, each of those cards would get an attack. However, having said they don't get another attack, that's the end of the player's phase and on to the monster's phase. And the boss is still standing here, meaning he does get another attack on me because this is now the monster phase. If he wasn't in my space, he would get to move, then attack. But he is, so he doesn't need to move. And, okay, so he rolled two swords to my one shield. So I defend one of them, which means I'm down to two health. But because of my special skill, I inflict a wound to the attacker which will kill him because he only has one health. It doesn't matter that he's the boss, he still only has the one health. So for defeating the boss, everyone gains three XP, taking me to four, and I gain the equipment that he was carrying, this ship skirmish bow here, which uh, I'm not too interested in using a bow, so isn't great for me. Now it was the experience phase, but I only have four XP, which isn't enough to buy anything. So we move on to the event phase and the event we get. Heroes in shadow zones he may heal one. Excellent. Except I'm not in a shadow zone. I'm in fact, I'm stood right on a torch here. If I'd been one space over, no, nope, still a shadow zone. The only shadow zones would have been down here or over here. So unfortunately I don't get to heal. But it is now the end of round phase, so I pass the first player token back to myself as I'm the only player. But it means player phase again, so I'm going to use first action to move. And my second point of movement, I'm going to pick up all the tokens. So in this quest, picking up this library token means I have picked up the key, and I discard the token and gain free XP, which puts me up to seven. I also gained free treasure tokens. Now, because these treasure tokens are on a tile with a level one marker here, that means that they are level one treasures. So I draw three level one treasures, which I can immediately equip if I want. So what we've got is a chainmail armor, which gives one blue, but also gives a defense ability. If you roll one of the starry symbols, you get an extra shield. So it's slightly better than my leather armor, also have a battle axe which still the same as my mace has one yellow but its attack ability is if you roll one of the starry things the defender gains attack minus one yellow dice for their counter attack and a javelin which can be used as a melee action and gives a red dice for attacking so I'm not too interested in those melee items, but I do want to equip this armor. And having finished that action, I think it's time to transmute and upgrade. So we'll keep the battle axe for now, and we'll upgrade our leather armor, the skirmish bow, and the javelin. So we discard these, and although the leather armor is a starting armor, it does have a level on it, so it can still be done. And we draw a level 2 item, which is Axe of Renewal. So this is a two-handed item, but it does give a yellow and a red attack dice. And the hero may heal one of, they roll one of the starry symbols. If they roll a diamond, they may heal two. Given that I'm damaged, that will be really useful, and it's more attack dice. So I'm going to equip that but it does now mean I can't equip anything in my other hand. Now, I can equip this despite it being level one because I'm not on story mode. If I was on story mode, I can have this item, but I cannot equip it until the current quest reaches level two. So that was one action. Second action, I'm gonna do another move. First point to move to move into there. Second point to pick up these free treasures. So again, we get free treasure cards. So we have a composite bow, which I'm not interested in, not interested in bows at all. We have an orb of courage, which is a magic attack item, so I'm not interested in that. 
and oh lucky find so if this was revealed as because of opening up a treasure chest which it was you discard this and draw a level two treasure very nice and we have a level two hammer which uh, just gives two yellow but it is single-handed so we'll keep hold of this for now i don't think any of the others we want to equip but i think what we'll do is we'll transmute them so we get another level two item and we get wand of healing well it's a magic attack item so we're not too interested in that so we now have two level two items that we're not using and our final action point will move and pick up yet more treasure and we get plate armor which uh, gives the defender an extra defense permanently so this is better than our chainmail which required a result on the dice to do it so we'll equip the plate armor and just put the chain to the side for now we also have a scepter of hate well that's not much use so we'll just put that to the side for transmuting and a dagger again who wants to use a puny little dagger so we'll transmute that later at some point speaking of which we have enough items so let's do a transmute we'll transmute our chainmail scepter of hate and dagger into a level two item and we get a lesser healing potion oh discard this card during the hero's activation to heal up to two oh well i'm really damaged so i think we will use this immediately to heal so we're back up to four health and then enemies phase there are no enemies on the board so straight on to experience phase well that wasn't the most exciting of rounds but picking up the key means that we now have enough xp to actually spend some because we're up to seven so we'll spend five and take us down to two xp but what do we want to buy we could buy charge which will allow us to move two spaces and attack as an action. We could get an attack on a crit, the defender loses a blue defense dice, that would be useful. We could get bloodlust on a melee, you automatically do one wound. So even if I miss, I'm gonna damage them. That's, oh, I think that's gonna be the one. So we'll tick that, or, or charge. So in charge would save me moving around and then I'm likely to do them a wound anyway or am I no let's go with this so we've bought bloodlust then our event this round we have an agent patrol so we spawn an agent and the agent we have is a goblin agent and he's going to appear on the current level token and as a guardian the item he has is dagger of sure strike so when attacking may re-roll blank results one additional time and it's giving him a third yellow dice on his attack so he's going to be pretty hard and he's got two health so we'll see how we get on with him then the end phase again passing the token and it's player phases so it's important to note with the agents here that if at the end of the enemy's phase he's still around, he's going to spawn more guards, which is not great for me. So I want to take him out. Unfortunately, I didn't buy charge, so I'm going to have to use an action to go one, two, and use movement. So I'm now in range to attack him. So I will do so. And I now have my Axe of Renewal, so I get a red and a yellow dice. We're not in shadow, so I'm not going to get my shadow skill. However, I am automatically going to deal him one wound, which is good. His defense is a blue dice, and let's see what the result is. So, oh, I did not roll well. I'm going to re-roll both my attack dice using my inner rage ability, which is my skill. Oh just as bad so he successfully defended my attack but because of my bloodlust he does take one wound but he's still alive 
Thankfully though, he doesn't get to counter-attack yet, because that was only my second action to attack him. I used one to move, one to attack, so I'm going to use my third action to attack him again. And let's see, ooh, well, he doesn't have any defense abilities to trigger on that, but he did get two defense. Ooh, I can trigger my heal one, except for, oh no, I can, I was only at four health, so I'm now at five health. And I've got two balances out his defense, and one, so I do him one wound, plus my blood lust wound, I do him two wounds, which... Would have been enough to kill him even if he was at full health. So the agent dies, and all heroes gain 4 XP. And I gain this Dagger of Shore Strike here. Now, unfortunately, my axe is two handed. Otherwise, I could equip this dagger as well and uh, then get the benefits of both items when attacking. So it'd give me an extra yellow and allow me to reroll. So I want to keep hold of that dagger in case I equip a different item that's one-handed. What I could do is equip this dagger with this hammer. That'd give me free dice. But the red dice are more powerful and this allows me to heal. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to equip the hammer and the dagger. And I'm going to keep this axe to the side for now. And it's then the enemy's phase, which there are no enemies on the board, because I managed to kill the agent, thankfully, before he got a chance to spawn more guards. So, experience phase, I do have enough to buy a skill, which this time is going to be the charge. So, it costs me five of my six XP, taking down to one. And we get... Forward monster patrol, so we're going to spawn our first roaming monster. So as the current level is between 1 and 3, it will be a lesser roaming monster. If it was 4 or more, then it would be a greater roaming monster. And it's going to be spawned on the current level plus 1 token. So the level 2 token here. And we get Hellhound. So here is our lovely Hellhound miniature. And we place him out. As a roaming monster, he is a guardian, and therefore gets a treasure card of the current level. So, he gets ah, oh, a uh, guillotine potion, which gives an extra action. Well, that's not going to help him, but it will be nice for me as a reward when I finally get around to killing him. And so, that's the event resolved. End of round, we move token, and it's on to player actions. So... Unfortunately, charge would allow me to move two. He's not in range. So he has a lot of health. He has four health, which is going to be pretty nasty. Uh, he's got a lot of magic stuff, so I don't want to be attacking him with magic, which is fine, because I'm not going to be. But he also has a lot of defense. I feel like he might be a bit hard for me to take at the moment. But I don't have a lot of other options, so I'm going to have to try it. So I'm going to use one action to go one, two, then I'll charge with my second action. So we're in a shadow space, so I get my shadow mode skill, which is plus one sword result. And I get three yellow dice from my two items. And I may re-roll blanks an additional time. So as well as being able to use my ability to uh, my inner rage skill to be able to re-roll dice. I'll also be able to re-roll blanks. But will that be enough when he has free blue defense dice? Let's see. Oh, so he rolled a lot of defense. So I'll use my inner rage to re-roll all of these, I think. And hope I get some twos come out. And no, nope, but I can reroll the blanks due to the dagger of shore strike. And I end up with the exact same. So that wasn't great. Um, so free to free. He doesn't have anything magic defense, which, but it's not a magic attack. So um, I do him one wound because of my bloodlust. I want to have plus one attack. 
because we're in shadow so I do him two wounds so he can take two tokens so he has four health that's him halfway down and that was one move one charge so I have an action left so we'll go for that again at another attack and this time dice are actually in shot uh, so he's got two defense so a bit better for me uh, I'll keep that two hits uh, don't have anything to trigger off the symbol and I'll reroll these much better so that's a lot better so with my plus one for my skill that's six minus two is four plus an automatic wound five wounds seven wounds total he is out of here he's dead uh, so that's five XP and I gain this guillotine potion which allows you to do an extra action immediately. I'm just going to keep hold of that for now. So that's all my actions. There's no enemies on the board to resolve. So experience. And before we look at experience, I've actually missed something. As soon as I stepped onto this tile, this should have flipped and this should have become active. So we're current level is now level two. So we're now into level two. I could have bought level two skills anyway, but now I'll actually be able to use them. I'm much more tempted by them. I've got six XP, so I could afford the plus two max health. I could afford the shadow mode um, defense skill that inflicts a wound, or I could upgrade the charge, or I could buy the battle, uh, the brutality. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for the upgrade the charge so that when I charge, doing a melee attack, I get an extra reroll on the attack, but only for the attack dice. And I can do this because I have the first level charge. Then for our event, we have Shadow Blessing, Heroes in Shadow Heal 1. Uh, well, I'm at max health, so that doesn't really help me much. But at least we've got no more monsters yet anyway, because end phase and my go. And I now have the option. I could just run to the exit and finish the quest. But what kind of true adventurer would leave a room unexplored in a dungeon? So we're going to go one, two, open the door and we find... Two, oh, wrong way up. Two chests and no enemy. Three chests and a guard. And two chests and none. So we want a level two now because we're on level two. Guard. And we get dwarf defender guards. So there's the boss with his spiky hat. And we want spiky hat and cleaver for the minion and there's just the one minion and these guys have two health and because we're at level two the boss gets as a defender level two item which is a healing potion so I've done one action I think I'll use my second action to charge so one two and attack so I'm still using the free yellow dice and their defense is a green and a blue dice. And they do have a melee defense ability. If they get a diamond, they're going to inflict a wound to me. So let's see what we got. Well, they didn't get a diamond. They got one shield. Uh, we're in shadow, so I get a bonus sword. And I can have a reroll for being in shadow... Uh, sorry, I can have a reroll for charging. So I'm going to keep that result anyway, because I like that one. I'm going to reroll these for charge. Oh, very nice. Okay, we're just going to keep those results. So, in fact, I should have actually had to reroll all of those for charge, because it isn't reroll any number, it's reroll attack dice. So I should have had to reroll all the attack dice. But luckily, my inner rage ability would have allowed me to roll just the two. So we'll go with I use that. So, I don't have any attack abilities triggering off of this, uh, but that six attack 
to their one defense so that is five wounds plus my automatic wound for being in shadow uh not for being in shadow for my bloodlust that's it um so yeah that's six wounds unfortunately all i managed to do is kill a minion but that's still that's one xp and I now have my final action I can use to attack the boss. So roll same dice. And still no diamond for him, but he did get two shields this time. I've got pretty bad dice, so I'm not I'm not done a charge this time. So I can't use that. I'll use my inner rage to re-roll. So, much better results, and then I'll use my short strike to reroll the blank. Yeah. So, uh, 5 minus 2 is 3, which is more than his health, so he dies. Another boss bites the dust, putting me up to 5 XP now with that 3 more. And, of course, we get rid of the card, goes to the discards, and we get the level 2 item of the healing potion, which I don't particularly need. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got three level two items here. The Axe of Renewal, the Wand of Healing, and the Lesser Healing Potion. Hmm, all healing based things. I'm going to trade those in for a, a level three using Transmute. And the level three item is a healing potion. Um, so that didn't make a whole lot of difference. So that's my three actions. I think what I'm going to do is use the guillotine potion to get another action which I'm going to use for movement to pick up the three treasures so that's three level two treasures and we get a short sword uh, yeah. nothing terribly special there I could replace the hammer plate armor well that's slightly better plate armor than my current one so we'll equip that because it uh, has two dice rather than just the one. And we've got an ice sword, which is better than this short sword, actually. Uh, One-handed and can stun the enemy, meaning they get laid down. That could be very nice. So I think I'm going to give up my reroll and equip the ice sword in place of the sure strike dagger. And then do a transmute with these three level ones to get a different level two, which is a javelin that I have no interest in. And I have a second point of movement, so I'll move to there. Then enemies phase, there are no enemies, so on to experience. And I'll spend the five I have on... enhancing my health here so plus two max health puts me to seven in our invent and lightbringer's protection inflict two wounds to it one enemy in a shadow zone there are no enemies to inflict the wound to but that means yet again nothing new coming out to fight so with that i could hang around and try and pick up the rest of this treasure but i think i'm going to go one two one two and out the exit and that is the end of the quest and that is the tutorial for Massive Darkness. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.